and we help to merge different devices, different device types. So you can use indoor air quality from one vendor and if you don't like it, you can switch to another without the switching platform, without uh, additional customizations of the software side. Hello and welcome to IAP Exchange viewers. Today I'm talking to Anatoly Zimin, the CEO of GreenMesh, an IoT services and software company based in Ljubljana in Slovenia. Um, and Anatoly, we're going to talk today about um, the IoT, the IoT market, how it's evolving, uh, the kind of applications uh, where you're really seeing a lot of interest, and of course to um, tell our viewers um, about Green Mesh and about the value you, you provide. So, Anatoly, um, welcome to IP Exchange. Thanks a lot for the invitation. It's a pleasure for me for being here. So, yeah, as already mentioned, I'm the CEO of the Green Mesh, and uh, initially. Uh, we developed a lot of interesting hardware, but during the COVID-19, uh, we switched our focus on the software development. And uh, initially it was like uh, everything agnostic cloud IoT platform called Vigelix for different purposes. Uh, and we are able to connect uh, different hardware from uh, many manufacturers and uh, analyze this data. And uh, currently uh, we have more narrow focused, uh, focus focus uh, for the smart cities. Uh, and there is a lot of interesting things uh, which we can do. So uh, it's including uh, smart irrigation, public parks, uh, building automatization, uh, detecting all the uh, equipment falls. Uh, so we help to um, cut costs uh, on the maintenance, uh, on the energy, water consumption. And for sure, some buzzwords uh, will help to use uh, CO2 footprint. Okay, so some, some classic sort of IoT, smart building, smart city kind of applications there that you're, uh, that, that you're supporting. Um, so um, I, I saw it in my introduction, I described you there as a, as a software company. You're saying your, your origins actually is a hardware company. Do you, are you still, um, is that still an active part of the company? You still sell hardware devices or, or is it a complete switch over to software now at Green Mesh? No, currently it's completely software because yeah. due to disruptions on the semiconductor market uh, during the COVID-19, uh, it didn't make sense to make hardware for us. Uh, it's our personal choice, um, but I hope that we can uh, return to the hardware development soon because we have a lot of prototypes, a lot of interesting things we, which we can bring to the market. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, um, maybe that will be a, a subject for a future IP exchange interview. For, for today, we'll, we'll concentrate on the software side. And um, maybe you can you can sort of describe to us the, the problem that you were trying to solve when you when you first developed Widgelix and, and, and the software side of, of your business. Um, what um, without your um, uh, without your product, without Widgelix, um, how do what's the problem that your customers face that they're trying to solve? Uh, problems uh, that there is a huge amount of the platforms and uh, turnkey solutions, including hardware and platform, uh, but uh, they provide only a single opportunity, for instance, uh, monitoring indoor air quality or monitoring energy consumption for some facilities. Uh, but once you want to merge some analytics to detect some anomalies, uh, reveal some patterns uh, with, with the data from different kinds of sources, uh, it's a huge problem. Uh, you have to, you have to, if you work with a single vendor, you can use only their hardware, for instance, and you cannot uh, add, uh, add value with another data source uh, it could not be just the hardware it could be weather forecast services uh, whatever you like so we help to uh, we help to merge uh, different devices different device types so you can use indoor air quality from one vendor and you, if you don't like it you can switch to another without the switching platform without uh, uh, additional customizations of the software side and what's the the root cause of that of that problem? Is it that just that the different hardware or different um, systems, as you describe, weather forecasting or whatever, um, that they produce data in different formats and with and 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 uh, via different interfaces, and just that, that 
th those things are normally incompatible? Yeah, uh, at first uh, point of view, uh, they have uh, different standards of data communication. In general, they have the standard protocol, but uh, if you dive deeper and you want to decode the data, you have to implement different decoders. And uh, we help to, um, for the non-technical uh, customers, uh, start to, to use different devices uh, more faster. So, and, uh, and even platform could support just one connectivity if we are speaking about LoRaWAN, Sigfox, or in BRT. Uh, so you can uh, meet some issues uh, to connect to the LoRaWAN platform, some NBRT device. Uh, so, uh, and we also help to merge different connectivity sources uh, together okay and so um i, I imagine that's involved a, a huge amount of um of, of of work behind the scenes to uh to to, to make that these various kind of protocols and interfaces um to provide some kind of standardization for them um have you so have you enabled this then generally for iot devices as a whole or is it for specific kinds of use cases Sorry, can you please repeat the question? So, um, the, the um, so there's a lot of a lot of uh, work that you've done behind the scenes to make these different kinds of hardware and and, and data systems work together. Um, but so, have you have you done that um, only for specific kinds of use cases? You 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 talked about kind of building management systems, for instance. Um, uh, an indoor air quality. So, do you support only specific use cases? Uh, no, as I mentioned, we uh, put into the core of the our platform uh, the independence of the hardware or solution. But we start from the general point. Uh, we are we helping to support a huge amount of uh, market uh, available devices, and currently we develop more. Uh, vertical specific use cases, uh, but it's also uh, very simple. So each customer can log into our platform, click install button, and just connect devices and start using some specific solution: waste management, indoor air quality, water management, whatever you like. So uh, and, and, and when they do and when they do that, they they they, they can do it with uh, only with the kind of hardware devices that you already support, or can you can the system be configured easily to support? uh new new kinds of hardware that uh that the customer wants so uh currently we support uh, most popular devices on the market so in most cases uh, our customers already have this or they choose the same vendor which we support uh, but if uh, they don't see some specific device that they want to use uh, they can ask us and we help to prepare everything and put a new device template to the repository or put new solution. Even more, uh, in our platform, we provide to an opportunity to build uh, your own uh, projects and replicate it easily across uh, your end users. For instance, you can uh, you, you can build the project inside VGLX with Endoria quality. You can put it into the private repository, create new user account and install it and just connect the sensors and you will get the same application within seconds. Okay, so um, uh, is your, uh, are you finding that your system is then enabling your customers to uh, to do things with IoT devices, with, with sensors and so on, that they have never been able to do before? Or is it more that, that, you're, that they're doing the things that they were always doing but it's become easier for them to implement. Um, so currently, there is some technical uh, um, some technical issues might become for the non-technical uh, customers because they still need to deal with the connectivity um, stage. If we're speaking about lower when you should have mm -hmm. maybe lower one base station or even able to manage your lower one network server. And uh, so in this uh, in this case, we also help to cut the process and uh, we provide lower one network server as well. 
Um, but yeah, you need some initial skills uh, to connect base station at least, or use the uh, public one. But also we provide such kind of services to uh, full onboarding and provide turnkey services. Okay. So, uh, and I, I guess um, the, the, the kind of situation you're describing there is, that, as you say, there there are there are implementation issues which require some kind of technical cap capability. Um, do, I guess you find that there are some customers who who will maybe look to a company like uh, like Honeywell, uh, so one of the big, um, very well established. Uh, hardware providers uh, and 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 a company like Honeywell would be able to say to a customer, "Well, you don't need to worry about um, integrating all these this diverse set of hardware from from different manufacturers. You can just use all Honeywell equipment, and it will all work together, and will provide the the, the, the software platform to, uh, to to fuse the the data from different Honeywell sensors, and it will all work together perfectly." I, I guess that's kind of uh, the part of your competition that you face? Uh, yes, sure. Um, I have actually examples uh, in, in such conversations. Uh, we have a few clients, a few customers uh, who installed uh, sensors and platform from large company. I, 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 could, I just don't want to name it. So uh, for, for for the data centers, uh, it's uh, fire security, access security system. Uh, they have a pretty huge uh, number of devices. Uh, but once the customer wants to connect some new device or collect new measurement, this company just doesn't have such device. And uh, you know, you can't ask some large enterprise to develop uh, this device for me so it's impossible yeah. and yeah. Um, they meet uh, such issue and so they ask us if they we can uh, connect all the data from this platform from large enterprise and add this uh, cheap device to collect the data from uh, from another source so uh, this this is the one potential issue so and uh, you can even connect to our platform Honeywell and merge with the, another devices from another vendors, whatever. And another point, uh, it's high integration costs. And once you locked with your uh, um, single hardware provider, uh, um, you can jump to another because you already invest uh, a lot of money for this project and you have to deal with all the pros and cons of, of this solution. Yeah, so I guess it's that classic case of be, of single vendor tie-in and being yeah. being locked into a single single vendor and not having the flexibility to choose um, the best in class hardware that you want to. So the point of Wigelix and, and, and Green Mesh is to enable people to um, build their own system and and use the hardware of their choice and 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 configure different a, a system with a with a diversity of hardware. Yeah. So, uh, and actually, uh, it seems like we also can be like the single point for all the uh, device, device data, uh, but we also provide the opportunity to send uh, our data from Vigilix to the third party, so we don't tend to lock uh, customers just on us. They, okay. Every time they have an option. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. And and how do you, how do customers tend to engage with you? Um, do 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 customers, um, uh, you know, do, people who are operating a last a large facility like a, I don't know, a university campus or a hospital campus or something, do do they uh, do they engage directly with you or will they go via a, a system integrator or how, how does that work? So uh, currently, our most of our customers are system integrators. So uh, they are um, conversates with the end users like uh, facility operators, uh, airports, hospitals, whatever. So, but uh, we also have the expertise, uh, as I said, uh, we developed hardware before and we have uh, experience with the Sigfox and BIT, whatever. So uh, we could help also provide, we could help to 
uh, implement uh, solutions directly. Okay, and um, and how do you feel um, the IoT market is, um, is is developing? I mean, people have been talking about the IoT for um, for well a very long time, uh, many many years, um, and the IoT can mean different things to different people. Uh, to, to what extent do you think the market has? really educated itself and, and learned what is the full capability of the IoT. You've been talking about um, the way that uh, different sensor inputs can be can be fused and merged to provide greater insight and, and, and better analysis. Um, to, to, to what extent has the market fully woken up to the potential and the capability of the IoT? It's a good question. Actually, if we're speaking about IoT market for B2B, I used to think in, it's still pretty young, uh, pretty diverse. Uh, so we have all these issues with the uh, devices interoperability. Uh, but uh, if you're speaking about B2C market, uh, IoT is everywhere. You have the uh, fitness bands, fitness watch. So I, in my apartment, I have some IoT things uh, which were implemented 10 or 11 years ago. <laughs> so uh, in terms of B2C, the market is pretty developed. Uh, but uh, when we are speaking about uh, smart cities, smart buildings, uh, we have uh, issues of scaling uh, and uh, high initial investments so uh, you have to install huge amount of hardware mm, pay for the installation maintenance whatever so th that's uh, still a problem and also uh, customers uh, worried about the cyber security uh, but who cares about your indoor air quality data in the office you know, <laughs> uh, but yeah, for sure, for the uh, for the uh, if we're speaking about um, healthcare, about the um, data which we collect from the uh, from the per people, and uh, it's very important, and uh, we should uh, pay a lot of attention attention for that. Yeah, yeah. The first step, it's uh, high fees and penalties from the government if you don't handle properly your data. So absolutely, um, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Okay, all right. So, um, so I think from what you're saying that there is there is a, a lot of scope for um, for more uh, IoT systems to be to be extend, expanded, to be scaled up, and for 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 new use cases to be developed. Um, and and guess I guess that means lots of exciting potential for for Green Mesh and for your Widgelix product. Uh, yes, for sure. Mm, you know. Mm, there is a lot of market players, a lot of platforms, uh, solution providers, but uh, smart city market uh, growing 20% over um, year over year. So we have uh, a lot of space for the development. Okay, excellent. And uh, space uh, globally, uh, do you are you able to support customers anywhere in the world? Yes, uh, th that's the best uh, part of the cloud software. We can work globally. So we provide our solutions uh, really in Australia, United States, uh, in Europe uh, and Middle East. So very good. And if uh, so, if a viewer wants to find out more about uh, about Green Mesh, uh, I guess the first place is to go to it was it greenmesh.org. Exactly. Excellent. Very good. Well, Anatoly, thank you so much for explaining the company and and, uh, and the, the the market to us. It's really good to to hear about Green Mesh about your Widgetlex product. Thank you for for your time today. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot.